Hey guys, Derek here with Tap and Turn Gaming coming at you today with another EDH Deck Tech. This will be another installment in our series of Battling with a Budget, and it is also another user uh, subscriber requested deck rather. So as you can see right here, it is for Dakon Black Blade for less than fifty dollars, and this was a deck uh, requested to us by Tyler Hosey Worrell. So this will be the deck that you're looking for. He asked for a Dakon Black Blade uh, with less than fifty dollars spent. Uh, the only stipulations he gave us really besides that is that he already had a Vents of the Sojourner, so we could incorporate that for free, which is $10 off the, the price of the deck, more or less. And he also had a Strip Mine already. So Vents of the Sojourner, the Planeswalker, and Strip Mine are in there, even though they put it over the budget, because he already had them. That being said, I'll go, over, go ahead and say our normal stipulations of we try to create a deck for less than $50, as well as having the general and sleeves and deck box not included in that total. So this is an attainable deck for $50. Uh, this deck's total came in at $48.06 using TCG Mid. Uh, with that out of the way, I'm now going to go over the deck and the cards we chose and some of them for why. So I'll start off with the land base. As we've said numerous times in our other Battling with a Budget installments, the easiest way to really slim down the cost of your deck is with the mana base. So this mana base was uh, pretty basic. We have an Amaria the Sky Rune, because it can res if you would get up to seven planes, Esper Panorama, Evolving Wilds, 11 Islands, 11 Planes, a Strip Mine, because it was for free, already included, uh, 11 Swamps, and a Terramorphic Expanse. So we included the, the three really cheap filter lands, um, you know, more or less, and then our Tudor lands, I guess you could say, however you want to call them, but uh, Esper Panorama, Evolving Wilds, and Terramorphic Expanse will help you get your third color or second color if need be, for relatively cheap. As far as Planeswalkers, the only one we're currently running is Venser the Sojourner, um, and that is because we could include him for free, so we did so. But he has some good modes. Five cost Walker, comes in with three loyalty. He has a uh, plus two where you can exile a permanent you own and return to the battlefield at the end of your turn, or minus one to make all your creatures unblockable, or minus eight where you get an emblem, and from now on, whenever you cast a spell, you get to exile a permanent. Some really nice abilities on him. He's really a toolboxy planeswalker. He does a lot for you. Uh, now let's go over the deck itself. So for sorceries, we run Dark Petition, Day of Judgment, Debt to the Deathless, Diabolic Revelation, Diabolic Tutor, Distortion Strike, Exsanguinate, Extinguish All Hope, Increasing Ambition, Life's Finale, and Phyrexian Rebirth. So basically what you'll see here is a lot of tutors and a lot of sweepers, and uh, a couple tech spells like Distortion Strike and Exsanguinate and Dead to the Deathless. Uh, most of these are going to be for tutored for our pieces. This this deck has a, does have a couple little combos in it that I'll go over um, towards the end of this video. But now we're going to go over the artifacts. We have Ashnod's Altar for the Res, Azorius Kirun for the Ramp, Conjurer's Closet for the Flicker, Demir Kirun for the Ramp, Nim Death Mantle because it is a big combo piece actually. Ojitai Monument. It's nice for the ramp, but late game when you can turn this thing into a flyer, it's really, really nice. Orzhov Key Rune for the ramp. Um, and I also ran all three of the Key Runes, as I said, Azorius Key Rune and Simic Key Rune, uh, sorry, Demir Key Rune already, because I can also turn them into creatures. <coughs> and this deck does run a little light on the creatures, so this will really help us. Same with the Salungar Monument, I can turn it into a creature late game, and that's really nice. Uh, Swift Hoof Boots for the Hexproof and the Haste, and Whisper Silk Cloak for the Unplugable and the Shroud. For enchantments, we run Darkest Hour because it's a nice combo piece, Dictate of Erebos, Mobilization, and Palace Siege. So, Palace serves as a sort of a, a uh, recursion piece and Dictate for that Grave Pack effect uh, that everybody knows and loves uh, because, you know, we don't have a ton of creatures, but we want to benefit from when they die. For instance, we're going with Blue Sun Zenith, Cloud Shift, Counterspell, Delay, Deprive, Disda uh, disdainful Stroke, Dismember, Eye Blights Ending, Familiar's Ruse, Ghostly Flicker, Memory Lapse, Momentary Blink, Mortify, Murder, Rewind, Stubborn Denial, Sudden Death, Tainted Strike, Unmake, Utter End, and Victim of Night. So we basically went with this category of instance here being a lot of counter spells uh, and removal and some blink spells. Uh, mostly to just pave the way for our few creatures and to really let Dakon go in for some uh, some some good damage. I mean, he is a 6-cost general, and um, 
you know, he so he'll hit for six. And I actually realized just now I forgot to go over the general himself. So I'll do that. So we have Dakon Blackblade. He is a six cost Esper color general with star, star for his power and toughness. Uh, his only ability is that his power and toughness are equal to the number of uh, lands you control. He's a pretty cool general. I like the idea that he's just like a, a big badass knight. He's a human warrior. His mana cost is technically two white, blue, two colorless, a white, a blue, and a blue, and a black. Um, you know, it's, he's pretty cool. It probably was pretty good back in the day when legends were a little more bland than they are now. Um, that being said, I do have a little bit of a, a bone to pick with his flavor text. It says, my power is as vast as the plains, my strength as is that of the mountains. Each wave that crashes upon the shore thunders like the blood in my veins. So, he's an Esper color general, which makes him plains, island, swamp. And in his flavor text, they mention that he's as vast as the plains, and that his blood is like that of the crashing of the waves on the shore, so that's islands. But then it says he's as powerful as the mountains, even though he would have swamp as his last sort of piece of power. And I guess that's just my own little, like, flavor piece of, you know, being stubborn about a thing, uh, because I'm very thematic when I build decks, usually. Um, but that's, you know, that's the general. He's pretty cool. I like his old school art. It's pretty good. Now we're going to talk about the creatures. We have Aberrant Overlord, Archaeomancer, Ashen Rider, Big Game Hunter, Clone, Dark Imposter, Dead Eye Navigator, Harvester of Souls, Kami of the False Hope, Karmic Guide, Mnemonic Wall, Peregrine Drake, Tesa Orzov Scion, and Viscera Seer. Um, so basically, this deck will function as one huge sort of combo piece of craziness. There's a lot of good synergies in the deck, uh, but there's a lot of things that really come together to sort of combo out. So one of the things I will say that we have for a combo is, obviously we have Deadeye Navigator, and we have Peregrine Drake. Now if you soul bond those two together, you have infinite mana. Because using Deadeye, you can flicker out the Peregrine Drake for two mana, but when he comes back he'll untap five lands. So what that means is from that point on you have unlimited mana. When you have unlimited mana, you'll also be able to use that mana for you know whatever colors you want, <clears throat> as long as you use one blue of it to uh, flicker out the drake. But you know you will most likely have all three of your colors by that point, so you will now have un unlimited mana. With that infinite mana, you can do a few things. You can force someone to draw their entire deck with blue sun zenith, or using exsanguinate you can drain the whole table, or using debt to the deathless you can deck the whole table. So that is three different possibilities right there for an auto win, more or less. Then we also have things like Dead Eye plus Karmic Guide for as many reses as you want, or Mnemonic Wall and Archaeomancer for as many um, returning your Sorcerers and Instances as you want. You know, two mana, flicker your Archaeomancer, get back a counter spell and counter their spell. You can, you know, it really is a lockdown sort of deck. Uh, or you can flicker their, your Ashen Rider to exile their permanents. Or you can flicker Aberrant Overlord to get tons of tokens. Or you can flicker Clo uh, Big Game Hunter to kill things. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, I mean, that's that's more or less what the, the real good flicker effects. But, I mean, a, a nice one I like to do is have Dead Eye out, pair him with Karmic Guide, sack a Kami of the False Hope on their turn so they can't do any damage to you, end of their turn, flicker Karmic, and get back Kami. Uh, and then you can keep doing it in and lock down their combat step. So that's also very nice to be able to lock down their combat step. But another great little combo in the deck that I came across is if you have down the Nim Death Mantle, so when a creature dies you can pay for it or res it, and you have Comic Guide and any one of these creatures, and it doesn't really matter, any one of them. So what you'll do is you'll sacrifice, let's say it was uh, Aberrant Overlord. So you could sacrifice Aberrant Overlord uh, with something like Ashnod's Altar, to get the two mana added. Well, you'll need, you'll actually, sorry, you'll need Nim Death Mental and Ashnod's Altar. So then you can sacrifice, we'll say, we'll say the Aberrant Overlord to the Ashnod's Altar for two mana. Now you have two mana floating. Then you'll sacrifice the Karmic Guide for two mana to the Ashnod's Altar as well. So you'll have four mana floating. You'll use that four mana floating for the trigger for Nim Death Mantle to res your Karmic Guide who will in turn raise your Aberrant Overlord, and he'll generate you more tokens. And you'll sack him, him again for two mana, sack her again for two mana, use that four mana to use your Death Mantle again to bring her back, and to bring back the Aberrant Overlord, and continue to do that again and again and again until your heart's content. But you could change that out to, say, Archaeomancer, and do the same thing, get back all your Sorcerer's Instance, 
Ashen Rider, exile all their permanents. Uh, big Game Hunter to kill all their big creatures, you know, so there really is sort of like a lot of going on with this deck. Another great combo that's in this deck is if you have down Tesa, um, so you can sacrifice three white creatures to remove a creature from the game, that's awesome. Or whenever another black creature you control dies, you can get a 1-1 white spirit. <coughs> so what this will do, is if you have down her, and you have down Darkest Hour, this makes all creatures black. So what that will do with Tesa is when you have a creature that dies, oh, when, when Darkest Hour is down, all your creatures are black. So when one of your creatures dies, it's going to be replaced with a 1-1 white spirit that becomes black because of Darkest Hour. So at that point, you'll have an, sort of an infinite generation of creatures. So what you'll want to do is add like a Viscera Seer. Then you can sacrifice a creature to Viscera Seer to scry. It will be immediately replaced with a 1-1 white spirit that comes black. So you can sacrifice it again to scry again. So at that point, what it does is you now have perfect draws. From that point on in this game, you will draw only the card you want to draw. Because at the end of your opponent's turn, you will scry till you get the card you need. Once you get the card you need, you win the game. I mean, more or less, that's, you know, you're only going to get the pieces you need from that point on. And that's really, really, really phenomenal. Another thing we can do with the infinite mana that I mentioned earlier with Deadeye Navigator and Peregrine Drake is also use Dark Imposter for the six mana to exile a creature. Uh, and that will just, you know, make him get bigger and bigger. You can exile every creature on the board. You can also generate the infinite mana using the Ashnod Altar, Nim Death Mantle, Comic Guide combo if you swap out for Peregrine Drake. Uh, so as you can see, a lot of these cards are going to fill a dual role and a dual purpose. Um, then we have things in here just like Distortion Strike to give our general unblockable. He's already going to be a 6-6 if you cast him straight up. So if you cast Distortion Stroke on him, or Distortion Strike rather, now he's a 7-6. You attack, he hits for 7 because he's unblockable. It's going to rebound next turn, you're going to cast it for 7 again. Uh, you're gonna, sorry, you're going to attack for 7 again, and now you're within 7 points. So he's a 3-turn a clock at that point. Yeah, and then we have like the Conjurer's Closet will fill a very similar role to the Flicker effects that we already have in, as will Venser the Sojourner. But once you get down Venser and you have down Conjurer's Closet, the the flickering will really become a powerful tool, and you're mostly using the flickering to be able to get back all your instants and your, your instants because they're your real weapons, your removal, your counter spells, and all that. Uh, but you know that more or less sums up the deck itself. As you can see, it's a pretty pretty balanced spread between the three colors. Um, the instants are probably the biggest part of the deck here. Well, they, I mean, not, not they probably are. They are as far as the biggest proportion ratio of the actual uh, slice of the pie here. With, let's see, with, uh, yeah, creatures coming in second and then sorceries. Um, then after that, if you want to take a look at our our actual uh, uh, mana curve here, you know, we, we curve pretty well, pretty heavily actually, into 1, 2, and 3. Uh, and then we drop down considerably to four, go up a little bit, whatever, whatever. But, I mean, that, that means pretty much once you get past the point where you're at the three mana cost and you get to four or five mana, that's when you'll be able to start casting spells and have mana back for your removal as well in hand uh, because most of the deck costs three mana or less. So TCG Mid has this deck at $73.50, but that's because we added in the Venser and the Strip Mine. <laughs> which it auto calculates in, but those were included for free because the oh, the subscriber did request that to be already in there. So this deck did come in, like we said, at forty eight dollars and six cents. Uh, I actually really like this deck once I built it. When I first saw he suggested Decon, I was like, oh, what am I going to do with him? I don't really know how I want to build Decon. Uh, he seems kind of bland. But really, just building a deck that will lock down the board around him and allow him to just swing a couple times. He's, he's basically a three-turn clock, uh, so he's really, really not that bad, and I really found myself enjoying the deck that I built. I think it came out pretty well. I'd like to know what everybody thinks about it. But yeah, this was uh, Derek with Tap and Turn Gaming. This was our Battling with a Budget Deck Tech Ford Decon Blackblade for under $50. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff, and we will get back to you later. Thanks a lot, and goodbye.